This is Offshoring and Outsourcing Philippines, your regular update on the business processing industry in the Philippines. Here's your producer, Henry Acosta, with this week's lineup. For this episode of the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines podcast, our first guest is Jimmy McBride of OptiBPO, and you can listen to him and his interview at the 52nd mark of the podcast. Our second guest is Michael Higgin of Mike's Business Tours, and you can listen to him and his interview at the 12-minute mark of the podcast. Our third and final guest is Stu Abancho of Philip Jack Search Solutions, and you can listen to his interview at the 22 minutes and 32 seconds mark of the podcast. Hi, I'm Henry Acosta, and welcome to the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines podcast. Today, our guest is Jamie McBrien. Jamie is the director of Opti BPO. What Opti BPO does is it helps companies get started with their offshore operations here in the Philippines with ease, convenience, and minimized risk. You can start out at any level with Opti BPO, and they're here to help provide a solution for it. With offices in Sydney and London, Opti BPO provides offshore support for companies in Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. With that, welcome to the show, Jamie. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me here today. Can you give us a little bit more background about yourself? Yeah, look, um, I've been around the uh, the offshore and outsourcing shared services market for around uh, 20 plus years as, as a management consultant. Started off my career at Pricewaterhouse as an auditor before moving into consulting at Deloitte, where I left having led the shared services and outsourcing practice around 10 years ago. Um, since then, I uh, yeah. built a management consulting business focused on finance and back office operations uh, from around 2008, um, which now has two brands, Optum 2 being one where we provide pure management consulting around process and structure, and Opti BPO where we extend that process and structure expertise into the offshore local of building dedicated teams uh, in the Philippines. Um, so we've been running with that for a, a number of years now uh, mm-hmm. and have a fair bit of experience in, in a range of offshore markets. But, but now as we've evolved, um, our 100% focus is on the Philippines. I see. And uh, how did uh, OptiBPO get started and uh, what do you guys do for clients? Yeah, look, I've always been around the outsourcing and offshoring uh, marketplace in providing consulting, as I said, around process and structure and getting getting systems right, but looking at a range of outsourcing and offshoring solutions uh, across a range of different industries and disciplines uh, around three or four years ago, though, we identified the need to have a more productized offering, uh, and that's where we, Opti BPO was born. Uh, we decided to focus on the Philippines, uh, and, and we decided that, that was, uh, that's, what, that that's where the, the, the opportunity lies. The difference for us, though, is that we're actually located in Australia with offices in Sydney and, and Europe with offices in London, uh, whereby we're able to provide onshore support for clients as they think about these things. So to help handhold them in some ways, help them manage the risk, help them think about what's required, make sure that they're ready uh, and make sure that whatever they do, um, they end up being a success. Uh, how did you find out about the Philippines as a strong company for out, or a strong country, I mean, for outsourcing and uh, what makes yeah. it different? Yeah, look, as I said, I've been around this marketplace for 20 plus years. Um, I've been involved in, uh, in, in projects in, in Malaysia, uh, in Vietnam, in China, in India, in Eastern Europe, uh, and, uh, and in Central America. Uh, and through all of, all of that, for me, uh, the Philippines over time has become the standout location. Uh, it's the standout location for Australian and New Zealand businesses, definitely, but even more so and growing so for European and even North American businesses. The thing that makes the Philippines better for me uh, is there's a strong command of English language, which if you compare it to the likes of Vietnam, um, they're still struggling. Um, The cultural alignment part, which we can't underestimate, is important. Uh, The Philippines, um, I think due to the American influence and other parts of their history, uh, have resulted in a culture that's a whole lot more aligned to some Western businesses and potentially some other areas of Asia, such as China or even India. Uh, And uh, it's just the the educated 
hybrid workforce that's highly engaged, motivated, uh, and willing to work hard. And, and when you look at the retention and engagement rates in the Philippines with the likes of India, mm. uh, you know the, the Philippines is doing far better than, than that location. Uh, and, and we're just finding that you know, now that it is the largest um, BPO market in the world uh, for knowledge-based outsourcing, uh, it, it just it, it seems like the only go-to location for us. Uh, where new clients coming in and out uh, would say, well, what's the best advice that you can give someone who wants to start outsourcing here in the Philippines? Yeah, look, I think one of the really important things is is not to rush into it. Um, we have a few clients that have rushed into it and, and and have not taken the time to think about the prerequisites. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get these things right, but it's important to get things right. And, and the things that we think you need to get right is, is the process piece. We need to make sure the procedures are, are really well defined and documented. Uh, mm-hmm. And and that kind of goes without saying. If you if you think about it, though, that's not just required for offshoring. That's just required for as a basic business framework. We need to make sure that those things are in place. Um, we also need to make sure that we thought through the structure uh, and, and what it entails. It's not always a one-to-one replacement. And, and by that, that doesn't mean that you need to hire more people in the Philippines. It just needs, means there needs to be thinking around what is the structure, where does responsibility and accountability sit, and where are the handoffs? As well as that, just making sure that our systems are ready. And again, all of these things don't take that long to address, but they need to be made sure they're addressed in a considered manner before we make any transition. And we've seen some clients rush into it. They've lost mm-hmm. a few team members here in Australia, and they go, well, here's a knee-jerk opportunity. Let's throw some activities across the fence. And that, that doesn't really ever work. Um, we need to take this step back, and it's worth just taking a little bit longer, um, spending the time, but but by a little bit longer, I'm, I'm talking weeks, not months, yeah. um, just to get those things right before we actually start any transition. What's the most common misconception that people have when it comes to doing business in the Philippines? Yeah, look, one of the biggest misconceptions, I think, is that the, the activities that people are offshoring are low-value, transactional, repetitive. Look, they, that kind of goes without saying that there is those opportunities around some of those transact core transactional activities. One of the misconceptions, though, is that there's a whole lot of higher value activities that you can still uh, easily deliver. Um, when you look at the Philippines, um, it, over its 20, uh, it's got more than 20 years experience in offshoring, but, but really over the last 10, 15 years where it's really taken off, you can find people that um, have had 10, 15, 20 years experience working for Australian, US and European businesses um, that have grown up through that structure uh, and are able to do a whole lot. We have clients that have you know, financial controllers sitting there. You know, we have clients that have senior marketing people sitting there. Um, there there's um, in, in the world of knowledge, um, there's, there's no reason why uh, you can't start to move up the value chain in terms of the activities that are there. And with 300,000 to 400,000 university graduates there uh, a year, it's um, uh, the country's going along in leaps and bounds. Mm-hmm. And uh, for our listeners right now, uh, what do you want them to take away from this interview? Yeah, look, I, I think the thing to take away is that that, that knowledge um, doesn't know boundaries anymore. Um, the idea that you can be protectionist and, 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 and contain industries within a single location, um, given systems, uh, Given the way the world works, given a global mobile uh, mobile global workforce, uh, knowledge is moving everywhere, uh, and we can't stop it. Uh, and so, it's one of those areas that, if you're not thinking about it, you should spend some time thinking about it because your competitors would be. And I think, really importantly, it's it's not about taking Australian or European jobs. Um, it's it's not that. It's, it's definitely about helping to provide a platform actually for growth. And we have lots of clients that. Well, cost is always going to be part of the story here. Yeah. Um, it's the growth imperative that they're doing this for. They're looking to grow their businesses, so they're looking to build the right platform uh, that, 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 that will enable them to do that. I see. And would you recommend to clients to go to the Philippines first before actually uh, offering their business? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's always a good option. Um, one of the things that we hopefully do is help clients proactively understand how things work. Yeah, we have seen clients that go, look, it's, it's always a good idea to go and get an understanding of the culture and how it all comes together. Um, that's one of the roles that we play, though, is helping people navigate that. But, yeah, look, uh, absolutely. And if not even 
right up front if um, as, as part of your project, I have had a few clients that have had hesitations in, in spending time up there. And I think the more time you spend, the more you learn, um, you're also the more uh, opportunities you start to identify uh, and you come back each time. And I know that I personally come back each time uh, with new ideas on how we can do things, how we can improve things. Mm-hmm. And it also just gives you an appreciation of, of the local culture and then an appreciation of yourself. Um, so, um, But also vice versa, once you've got a team up and running, it's always fantastic if you can to think about, well, how can you bring them out to Australia uh, or, or wherever you're located? Uh, so I think it gives them a bit of a feel for how things work in your home country um, so they can take that knowledge back uh, as well as, as they conduct their day-to-day activities. Awesome. And uh, for anyone interested in getting in touch with you and OptiBPO, uh, what's the best way to get in contact with you guys? And maybe tell us where you're located. Yeah, look, to, to get in contact with us, uh, our website's um, www.optibpo.com. That's spelled O-P-T-I-B-P-O.com. Uh, our contact details are, are on there. Uh, we have, as I said, we have an office in Sydney uh, that serves Australia and New Zealand clients uh, predominantly. And we have an office in London uh, that, that serves our European uh, businesses uh, over there. So um, you can find both of our contact details there and give us a call or, or send us an email or feel free to send me an email directly at jamie.mcbryan uh, at optum2.com. Awesome. Well, that's all our questions for today and thanks for coming by. We appreciate your time. Yeah, look, thank you for your time and I've, been, I've enjoyed being part of it. Awesome. And that was Jamie McBride. He's the director of OptiBPO. We just finished talking about the Philippines as the place to be when it comes to offshoring your business. If you would like to know more about the BPO industry and the ins and outs of offshoring your business, you can go on www.offshoring.com.ph. We're also available on SoundCloud and iTunes. I'm Henry Costa for Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines Podcast. Today, I'd like to welcome one of our sponsors. My guest today is Mike O'Hagan. Mike is the uh, director and uh, the owner of Mike's Business Tours, formerly known as Mike's Manila Tours, and Mike joins us today from Manila. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. Now, Mike, uh, I know a lot of people will already know you and know your history, but can you fill us in on what it is that Mike's Business Tours do? Yeah, I um, had a company in Australia that got into financial difficulty during the uh, so-called GFC. Um, and uh, we had a bit of bit of hardship there. And uh, to get out of that problem, I uh, moved a slab of the business to the to the Philippines, where we do a lot of back office and marketing from here now. During that pro, and that worked for me absolutely wonderful. It really was great. Along the way, I stepped on a few landmines and learned a few lessons. And I watched other people stepping on the same landmines and doing the same, having the same issues. So I started simply showing some friends what was happening in the Philippines, what was working and not working, and from that it's developed into what it is today now. I structured a three-and-a-half-day business tour uh, that goes through all sorts of different businesses. We visit about 20 different businesses. We have uh, three or four long structured lectures around different structures that you could use, why you would use each structure, why you wouldn't use each structure. We talk about locations uh, that you can operate in. Uh, Some work better for certain things, some for other things. And we talk about managing them and setting up your management processes and then how to extract a lot of productivity out of it. And it's been very, very successful. uh, uh, A lot of businesses have come through, 350 businesses or 360 businesses to date, creating a a lot of jobs here. Now, Mike, these are businesses that are looking to get into um, outsourcing and offshoring in the Philippines. Yeah, these are Western businesses, uh, mainly Australian, although we've got the, the odd Kiwi, and just lately we've had a, a surge of American businesses coming through as well. Um, but they range from, from pre-startups, guys looking for business ideas, through to uh, a few micros, but mainly SMEs, and we've had a few public listed companies come up as well and a lot of consultants along the way. So we get the full range of everything coming here. Um, They are curious about the Philippines. Um, They've decided that they need to learn what to do before they do it, which is highly advisable. We see a a lot of train wrecks here from people that are trying to 
outsource here have no idea what they're doing. Uh, they want to learn before they do. And they find my tours are, are all around uh, that teaches them everything uh, they need to just get it, go about it in the right way. So it's across the board, all, all sorts of businesses, uh, entrepreneurial, um, sometimes they've, they've got growth pains, sometimes they've got in, um, margin squeeze, sometimes they're just simply looking for new ways or new opportunities to sidestep the massive great changes that are coming their way in the world. Now, Mike, is there any particular summit or category that you deal with or is it actually right across the board, as you say? The tour is probably biased towards uh, building teams up here um, uh, through staff leasing, co-managed or host, hosted type services to start with. Um, although we also, of course, cover it if you want to incorporate here as well. Um, but uh, we also cover um, the outsour- the old traditional outsourcing from 20 years ago. That's the big guys and what they did and how they, they, they did that. That, of course, got a bad name when small businesses started using it. And we do cover and talk about uh, home-based or virtual workers on the likes of Upwork and all those type of things as well. So we cover the whole spectrum, but we probably lean a bit more to building teams. Um, You can start with one with a very, very low risk factor, uh, and you can ramp that up or down at will. And um, I see a lot of people, and I myself started with two workers here. Uh, in that other business I mentioned before, I started with two workers and very, very quickly we ramped up, learned what we were doing, we liked it, it worked well, and we're, today we're at 45 people, which was nowhere where we thought we would be. Um, so, you know, it suits everybody and, and we're the, leaning towards that. We do also cover a bit of manufacturing on the tour as well. And every now and then I run a special manufacturing tour in particular, but manufacturing is covered on the tour. You will learn a little bit about that as well. Now, Mike, for people who have, uh, well, for people who have never been on your tour and are thinking about it, give me a sense of how how big a group this is. You know, is is this a um, uh, the sort of who you see going to the to the uh, rugby sevens, or how many people are we talking about? Yeah, look, our 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 perfect number or our ideal number is six, and that's what fits in the van very comfortably. Uh, but I've been known to run 12 and 15 in special tours. Uh, and sometimes we get four on tour if we have somebody changes the last minute. So six is our perfect number. Uh, the tour is about workshopping together as well. So in between each visit place, we, we talk about what we saw, what we didn't see as a group. Uh, each of us has different businesses, of course, and everybody puts their two bobs worth in. So it's coming at you from seeing and touching. It's coming at you from lecture and it's coming back at you from workshopping with your peers as well. Uh, typically, the tour groups are, are pretty bonded and know each other a long time afterwards and they're sharing things ongoing. That's quite a common thing to happen. Mike, what about uh, tour groups of businesses that are associated through being members of a Chamber of Commerce or through a, through an EO forum or something? Can you do a specific tour for a group? Yes, yeah, certainly. I've done lots of them. Um, uh, been looking at doing, uh, we've done them for accountancy firms, bringing their clients up. We've done them for chambers of commerce. In fact, one of my most, most successful businesses was a, a whole chamber, not a whole chamber, but a chamber of commerce. I took that in Australia and a group of them decided on the spot they're going to come up. They all knew each other. Uh, partied a bit hard on that tour, but that was okay. But still, it was good time. And all of them did very, very successful businesses here and set up very, all by sharing with each other. So it, it sort of worked all around the thing. So, uh, and industries, I've done real estate uh, industry. I did a large one uh, for a, a group of real estate agents. Um, so it, almost anything else, um, uh, manufacturing, um, uh, I've done them specialised for that. And engineering is another one. Anything in the building industry, in costing, in drafting, design, uh, all those areas are all quite popular too. And I'm getting little groups of those coming through as well. Now, I know, Mike, that entrepreneurship is one of your passions. Uh, you, you describe yourself as having a mission about that. Yeah, so the tour isn't just about learning how to do business in the, in the Philippines. The tour has a very large dose of me, the entrepreneur, pushing. Most of the people on tour are what I call business managers. They're simply managing a business. And from where I'm sitting, if you have to, you only own a job. Uh, if you don't have to, you own a business. A business should work for you. You shouldn't work for the business. And I very much believe that, and I'm quite successful doing that. Today, I sit on 10, 10 boards now. I'm up, back up to 10 boards, um, of which I own a share in most of them. Um, I chair also about half those boards as well. I, The entrepreneurship will push you and push your business model to think outside the box. I will 
try and um, push you to, to go into a growth mode, to develop a process that gives you constant continual growth uh, and also uh, low cost. Um, I'm into bootstrapping. I don't believe in taking risks and borrowing money. I think you should fund it from within and make it pay for itself as it grows. Uh, and my absolute passion is to create more entrepreneurs. I totally believe the future of uh, our country um, for our grandchildren can only come from creating entrepreneurs today. If you look at Australia for a point in case, I would say to you that without the mining industry of the last few years, Australia's uh, would not have been anywhere near the economic success it's been. And that mining boom didn't come from the government. That mining boom came clearly from entrepreneurs who opened up the land Hancocks and homes a quarter of this world who, who opened up mining many years ago as a, as a product that Australia should sell. So I think the future of Australia can only come from entrepreneurs. I think globalisation is a reality. You're not going to stop it. You'll get a little bit of noise occasionally, but the genie's out of the bottle. You're not going to stop this. I don't think it's a threat. I think I just see it as an opportunity and I push that on the tours as well by uh, pushing the people on tour into business model. On the last day, we've extended the tour this year, it's now three and a half days. The last day is a whole planning session around planning, uh, not only what you want to do up here, but also starting to look at what you're inside your own business and re restructuring it and retargeting it to, to get it back into that continuous growth that I like to see. Well, for people who want to get in touch with you, either about uh, an offshoring and outsourcing business tour of Manila or about entrepreneurship, what's the best way to get hold of you? Um, my website is Mike's, with a plural, Mike, M-I-K-E-S, business tours, with a plural, T-O-U-R-S dot com. Uh, my direct email is my name, Mike, at O'Hagan, O-H-A-G-A-N dot com dot A-U. So Mike at O'Hagan.com.au, um, you'll find me on LinkedIn. If you just stick my name into Google, I apparently pop up everywhere and you, any of those things will get through me. Anything messaging on any of my websites will get me as well. Happy to uh, chat to anybody. Uh, I don't charge for advice. I, I sit here, I'm semi-retired today. I, uh, as I said, own 10 businesses and, 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 uh, and doing quite well at all those sort of things. So my, uh, I love having long chat Skypes about anything at all and helping anybody I can. So that's just my mantra. Thank you. Mike O'Hagan from Mike's Business Tours, um, an expert in outsourcing and offshoring in the Philippines and a very successful entrepreneur and a man passionate about entrepreneurship. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Wayne. Hello and welcome to the Outsourcing and Offshoring Philippines Podcast. Our guest in studio is Stu Abancho of PhilXX Search Solutions. Stu is their all-around guy. He's been with the company for almost a year, but he's already packed with a lot of responsibilities. He's currently the lead in marketing, sales, talent acquisition, and business processes. All that work is paying off for him and PhilXX Search Solutions since they are the fastest growing recruitment firm in the Philippines. Today we're here to talk about him, PhilXX Search Solutions, and the Philippines as the destination for a business. So hi Stu, thanks for coming by. Welcome and we're glad to have you here. We're happy to be with you guys. And yeah, uh, well to get started, uh, just we just wanted to know how did you get started or how did you get involved with PhilXX Search Solutions? All right, so um, uh, I think for me, um, a little background about myself first. I am, I've been in the search industry for more than five years already, and it might seem short, but it's super intensive um, work experience when it comes to search. So PhilExec actually started out as a recruitment company for a group of companies, which is um, a, conglo a, conglo a conglomerate to be exact so they were Phil exec was first at first catering um, giving candidates to this specific group of companies and then the investor of that group of companies saw the potential in Phil exec so they decided to cater um, to to serve other clients outside of that group of companies so um, with that expansion they got me to to help them in penetrating the market so since then I've been I've been helping them grow I've been helping them um, be very visible I see and uh, how, how does Felix Access Solutions uh, help out with people who outsource here to the Philippines 
Um, we help out by actually finding them quality talent. Um, that I think would be one of our main um, main differences from other search firms. We not only give um, we not only give candidate referrals and look at their whole recruitment process aside from the people sharing or connecting them to our pool, connecting them to our network. We we give them the whole complete talent acquisition package. So can you tell us a little bit more about Philexec Search Solutions and uh, all of the kinds of services that you guys offer? All right, so we we started actually three years ago, um, but the expansion we started uh, we started last August August last year. So we gave, we got clients from different companies um, just starting last August. Um, our tagline is beyond recruitment, and the reason for that is we really go beyond recruitment, meaning we give strategic talent acquisition services. Um, a lot of people would, would have the notion of recruitment and talent acquisition to be the same, but um, recruitment is actually under talent acquisition. So that's why we go beyond recruitment. We give the complete strategic talent acquisition um, consulting service. So we look at the process of recruitment for our partners, for our business partners, for our clients. Look at the process of recruitment, um, which is a factor in when it comes to attracting talent. We check that also if they're still doing exams. If our clients are still using exams, we check if it's still up to date or if it's still relevant for them to give out exams. Or we also check the rationale why why they want to give exams. Um, those stuff. So we. Give the total consulting package. We act as business partners and not just um, recruiters for rent, um, which we find very transactional. Um, we go beyond recruitment. We go, we become proactive as consultants also. Uh, with regards to your clients and with people who usually offshore work, uh, can you tell us? Can you give us testimonials of their experience with you guys? Yeah, of course. Um, we actually have a lot of clients that are overseas and are starting up here in the Philippines. That's a bulk of our clients. So um, they've been very thankful f for us because we've helped them um, set up their satellite office here in the Philippines from employee number one. Um, so we helped them build up their team. Um, other clients that we have are, are are companies that are looking for like virtual um, virtual assistants or um, we help them also by giving them quality people that they could trust. Actually, um, a lot of our clients are, are from the other from choose to offshore here in the Philippines because number one, it's 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 cheaper and and also the quality of talent here in the philippines could be could be very very comparable yeah. to yeah. or if not comparable better than the other countries yeah, yeah plus we, plus the communication skills in the philippines is it's a lot of filipinos can speak english so yeah language yeah. barrier isn't yeah we match yeah. up very good to other countries too with regards to correct talent and which this is it's a lot <laughs> so uh, correct yeah yeah. Uh, so, what other than Filipinos being talented, and other than the us being hard workers, what, what do you think makes the Philippines so attractive to clients as a destination for outsourcing? Um, I think one of the factors would be there's not there's no language barriers um, here in the Philippines. Um, a lot, if not a lot, majority of the Filipinos could speak English. So clear or understandable English. So I think that's one big factor why a lot of, um, of foreign companies outsource their employees here. Um, they easily get to understand and connect with the people compared to to other can to other countries that um, that is that they're hard to communicate with. Yeah, so I think that would be one big factor. Awesome, man. Uh, what, let's say for a, uh, you're talking to a client and they're looking to do business here. What would be your best advice when they first start doing their outsourced work here? Um, 
I would probably advise them to 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 just relax and leave the hard work to the consultants to outsource the the services to to the experts I would say um, and then give them feedback give them reports on 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 how things are here in the Philippines just so they could we could gain their trust and 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 yeah I think that would be my main advice for people who would like to outsource here I see it um, I'm just wondering how did you become the all around guy at yeah, sure. Sex Search Solutions uh, you don't really have a designated <laughs> or a title so yeah correct yeah yeah so I'm I'm actually um, I've been a recruiter for the longest time and then at the side I do sales so when I got here at Phil Exec, I uh, did all the all the all things already. So I'm doing sales, getting talent, uh, acquiring, and then at the same time I'm doing marketing. And then um, when I have time, I also would like to still look for people and connect them to our clients because that I think would be one. It's it's, it's a bit. Um, there's a better feeling when you when you give opportunities to people and help out your clients. So, yeah. So aside from doing sales, doing marketing, doing recruitment, I'm also the tech person here. So I set up I set up the technologies here, set up um, all the internet, all the programs, and all the software that we're using now. <laughs> You do sound like the all-around guy there. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> correct. Yeah. Uh, what What do people or what do foreigners usually uh, like? What's their biggest misconception when it comes to outsourcing here or doing work here in the Philippines? Um, I would say um, it's about the trust. I would say it's trusting the Filipinos. Um, I think there's a bad notion of Filipinos when it comes to foreigners. So my advice is just give them a chance to like get to know the Filipinos more, connect with them more. And I think that's the only way that they could break that notion of Filipinos not becoming, not being trustworthy or something. Yeah. Mm, I see. And uh, for people listening right now, for everyone, maybe you know, um, maybe people who are interested in working with Felix X or Solutions, or maybe potential clients, mm -hmm. uh, what do you want them to learn mm -hmm. from this interview? Um, I would just probably like them for that. Um, Felix X isn't the normal. Uh, or recruitment firm that you would see around here in the Philippines. Um, we would like to think of us as the first talent acquisition consulting firm, um, which gives you the whole talent acquisition package, which is not just recruitment, just what I said, just what I mentioned a while ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's one message that I like to get across: um, the difference of, of recruitment and talent acquisition. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well, since you already said that, uh, how can they get in touch with you and maybe get in contact? All right. So um, you could get in touch with me through my, my mobile, actually. It's, um, can, I just, can I say my number? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, it's 091 Seven five five one one two four five, and for more info about our company, Phil Exec, you could just visit our website at www.philexec.com. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, and we appreciate you for getting on the show. Yes, no problem. Thank you very much. And that was to a bunch of one of the leaders and the all-around guy at Philex Exer Solutions. We just finished talking about the outsourcing and offshoring industry here in the Philippines. And for more updates and information about the BPO industry, you, you can go on www.offshoring.com.ph. You can also find us on SoundCloud and iTunes. And we're available on Facebook and Twitter. You have been listening to an episode of Offshoring and Outsourcing Philippines, a regular production of Vertical Internet Media Limited Hong Kong, which produces internet media content for internet radio and podcasting.
And you may have also heard this week Henry Acosta and Patrick Reyes. The opinions expressed on this program are strictly those of the speaker. They are not the opinions of either Vertical Internet Media, its management, or the presenters of the show. To get in touch with Vertical Internet Media Limited, head off to our website at www.offshoring.com.ph or you can call our Australian number 0731 779900 and the voice prompts will direct you through to offshoring and outsourcing. It's been my pleasure to have you with us today. I wish you a very good day.